Guys, my heart never pounds so much in my life. My heart opened that letter. I saw my stay. <laughs> guys, I saw, I saw my look. I saw my look, guys. Let me tell you. I've never felt so crushed in my life. Like, pleasant day to all my viewers. Welcome back to another video. You know it's your boy, you reign here. And in this video, guys, I have some great news. Uh, I mean, most of you guys would have already figured out from the title, but yes, you know, finally I got to communicate with mommy. It was a great conversation, right? And uh, throughout this video, I'm gonna also leave like, you know, a little small screen record, you know, of the conversation. You, you won't be able to hear the, the voices, but you'll be able to see, you know, what was happening in the video call. Right. Also, guys, I'm here to encourage the youths today as well, the youths of our society, you know, that irrespective of life challenges, you can still reach your goals. So we're going to speak on that a bit as well. You know, so, yeah, I think this video is going to be a successful one. You know, do share it. Remember to like, subscribe and keep on following the journey. Um, I know I haven't done a live video in quite some time now. But certainly do look out for one very, very soon, right? So I'll be back on my, you know, live, live video. This is a pre-recorded video. So yeah. And you know, guys, you know, so yeah, this morning I was able to speak with mommy thanks to Miss Sue, right? Miss Sue got my brother a phone. So that was amazing. You know, I think uh, I emphasized on this on my birthday, I believe, when I was calling out the gifts and all that, you know, because my brother phone had crashed, you know, and there was no point of communication with mommy. And uh, uh, Miss Sue reached out and decided that, hey, you know, she will assist in getting a phone for my brother. So he got the phone, spoke with mommy today. It was an amazing conversation. Like, like, the, the the call reminded me how much you know i miss my mom you understand because when i called her it was just pure smiling you know as you can see in the screen record it was just pure smiling you know the way all she was replying to my questions and all that for example i was like mommy you know you know miss a big son of you know say big son of the, the devotes again right you know miss me and you know fear one answer she, she's not a woman of many words so her one answer yeah <laughs> I was like, you know, he's, you know, and she always says she have work for God, you know, the usual mommy, right? I got to know that she's in good shape as well, you know, no, you know, um, health conditions at this time. And yeah, she's doing pretty well. So, you know, as long as, you know, she's doing well, then that's good, right? You know, as you can see, the other, the person in the video as well, the young gentleman, that's my brother, right? 16. So um, he's also doing great. So, you know, thank God for health and strength. And, you know, let's just hope that it remains the same for, for a very, very, very long time. So, yeah, it was, a, um, you know, an, um, an amazing conversation, right? Um, hopefully, I get to see mommy again soon, right? And hopefully, the next time I'll be in a much, you know, better, what I can say, you know, like, you know, a much better state to, you know, help her to the best as possible. You know, as I, as I said earlier, before I even came here, you know, to experience a better quality of life before health worsens. Because, I mean, this is life. You know, this is life. And one day, health, you know, health will definitely deteriorate. It's, it's life, you know. So, um, hopefully, you know, I do what I have set out to do before, you know, life takes a course. So, yeah, you know, um, that's, that's the update as it pertains to mommy. I was able to speak with her and you know it was an amazing conversation now moving on moving on to a next topic as it relates to you know encouraging the youths of our society encouraging the youths you know of our country of our beautiful island jamaica and just in general the youths around the world right i'm here to share my testimony <clears throat> and if you're here watching let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. Every, anybody else, you know, everybody else can do it. Like, as long as you put your mind to it, you have the resilience and your the determination, then trust me, nothing is impossible. And I'm a living testimony of that. So, yeah, <clears throat> as you guys know, right, um, when I was in high school, when I, well, actually, when I graduated high school, 
I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, right? But at the same time, I wasn't sure, you know, if I wanted to do university in Jamaica, right? Like somehow I never see myself like, you know, wanting to further my education in Jamaica. And I know that would have been like a bold step, you know, to go elsewhere to take on, you know, a new country and adjust to a new country. I know it would have been expensive as well, right? It's not expensive, you know, it's hex with an H, expensive. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I know, right? And um, I know, you know, that it would have came with numerous challenges. But irrespective of that, I never let it, you know, blind my vision, right? I never let it, you know, push back my determination. I was, you know, just calm and, you know, just basically going towards the goal day by day by day, right? Now, as I said, just out of high school, not sure what I want to do with my life, not sure where my life is going to go. And the only thing I could do, you know, is just, it's just, honestly, guys, when I came out of high school, I was clueless, right? I mean, I was thinking of doing logistics, right? I was thinking of doing logistics because, you know, um, it was an, a field that was in demand in the Caribbean region. Well, logistics is in demand everywhere, actually. You know, but at the time, it was one of the most demanded degree in, on the island. So I was like, you know, all right, let's, let's see where we can start. Check marine time. You know, I was like, all right, if I can't get my plan to go overseas, let me check out marine time. Check out marine time, you know, because they're, they're the shipping and logistics institution. And their tuition was expensive, like 300000 a year. I was like, wow, you know, maybe I can't go to marine time as yet. So what happened is that there was this advertisement that, you know, for 2021 graduates, which I graduated in 21, 2021, we were gonna be get, we, were, we were able to get the opportunity to go to UCC to do a occupational associate degree in logistics and supply chain management for free. It was basically you know a scholarship to the government, right? So that was going on. You know, at the time, um, as I said, I was only doing this because I heard it was up in demand, and like I never had any deep interest in the shipping and logistics. So I started off with UCC in, in short, right? I started off with UCC. While I was going to UCC, I was like, you know, um, you're in, do I really want to do this? And that, that's what I was going through my head. Like, like when I was in classes, you know, um, when I was there, I was presenting, I was like, you know, I wasn't feeling it. Like I wasn't feeling that that burning, you know, education spirit that I'm feeling right now, that, that spirit to like push, you understand? I wasn't feel like, I didn't even saw the purpose, you understand? Like this was just not, not, it was not my area. It was where not, it, it wasn't where I want to study. Right. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, I think things were like not in line at the time. Anyhow, you know, I still went through right um i still went through i did two semesters got straight a's as you can see right never got a b right so irrespective of the fact that it's something i never wanted to do i still put in the effort needed you know to you know gotta get a few a's right so i wasn't i wasn't sure why i was doing this you know i wasn't sure how i even got into this you know shipping and logistics a very new term you know, and I was like, you know, let me just go with life. You know, let me just go with life until, until guys, one day after the second semester, I was like, I'm in an environment around persons who, you know, we think alike. You know, we are all from Jamaica. We are, we, most of us haven't been outside of Jamaica, you know, and we all have same experiences. You know, we all have same backgrounds you know the most are probably the most prominent thing between us is the fact that some of us were from different parishes and i was like to myself i wanted to be a case where you know like i'm in a place where you know it's more diverse you know like persons from different backgrounds you know like that was what i wanted you know i mean there was institutions like uh ue utic that had persons from 
different Caribbean islands mostly, right? But yeah, that was still within the Caribbean region, you know? And I wanted something that would have been more international, you know, something that would have g g given me the exposure. And not only that, but, you know, this is, this is me reasoning with myself at the time, you know, of my second semester at UCC, like, you know, actually reasoning with myself. This was me. These were the points I was saying to myself, you know? So, yeah, <clears throat> um, you know, I wanted that, you know, and uh, I needed a change, right? So, same time, without even um, thinking about you know, the consequences and all that, I contacted my program coordinator, tell her that, hey, you know, I don't think I'll be continuing in this program, right? Um, I think I'm going to move on into something else, right? Um, she was very sad because, let me tell you, I was the type of student, and irrespective of where I go, I'm the type of student that I bring vibe to the class. I'm the type of student that uh, my, like me being like the presence in the class, make my presence in the class, I would say, make the class more, you know, wanting to participate in a sense like that. You know, I'm the type that bring the energy to, to, to the class. You know, the class might be down and I'm here and there and, you know, you know, I'm the type that, hey, you know, if I realize that it, the lecture is going too fast and my peers don't understand, I will say, hey, stop for a minute. You know, let us just quickly explain that because I realize that, you know, maybe I catch it, but others don't catch it. So let us get them back, back on track as well. So I was that type of peer, you know, and yeah, it was very sad when I was leaving. Like lots of my, my different peers, you know, at the school, you know, were, were very sad as well because even when presentations, when we had to do presentations, you know, Call on you, Ray, then I'm ready. <laughs> you get me, guys? Say, it was a very sad. You know, I met some good, great people from there as well. You know, but as I said, um, I wanted something different. Like, personally, for me, maybe it, it could work for you. It could work for Jim Brown. It could work for John. You know, no problem. You know, if that's your way in which, you know, you want to take your life, no problem. But I personally wanted a different way. You know, I wanted something that was going to give me the exposure to an international phase. You understand, you know, something that would like present numerous opportunities, you know. So, um, yeah, I decided to take a leap of faith, right? Not knowing what's gonna happen, but I started working, right? I started working at this overseas call center, it was a remote job, right? They, they paid us 500 US base pay a month, right? That's like 50 something thousand Jamaican dollars, right? That's that was the pay. And sometimes, you know, it's call center, so you get like bonuses, etc., from time to time for making sales, you know, and all that. So, you know, those would add up at times. And yeah, you know, I started working and I'm saying to her, say, I'm saying to myself, yo, one day you're in, we're gonna have enough money to pursue my dreams, you know, and uh, I'm gonna be able to live the dream that, you know, I've envisioned, you know. So, um, you know, I started saving. And, uh, you know, hoping that I'll be able to reach my goal one day, you know, and I, re I applied to my school, Northwest, of course, and uh, I got an acceptance letter that even made my drive much more, guys. I was so happy when I saw the acceptance letter. Hold on, guys. Let me get some water because I really need some water, guys. Hold on. One second, guys. Okay. Okay, guys, I got some water. Got some water. Woo! It's not easy talking for so long, and I think I'm catching the flu as well. Anyways, guys, as I was saying, let me just check to ensure that my microphone is working and you guys are hearing me clear. Okay, great, it's working. All right. So as I was saying, though, guys, you know, um... Yeah, Norquist was there. I got my acceptance letter, you know, and uh, the drive built up even more, right? I was so more even focused at work because I wanted to make like bonus every single day to go towards my tuition, right? And I was saving, 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 saving. I was eating minimal because I had to put that money into savings. You know, all that was going on, guys. And, you know, my dream was to be here. You know, my dream was to be here, guys. Um, I applied for my student visa, right? I applied by my own. 
you know so it's like a case where I just did research you know as well as with the help of auntie right so I just did research you know me and auntie and we submitted an application you know and guys yeah <laughs> let me tell you something guys let me tell you something guys that wait that two months wait or two and a half months wait and higher to wait to receive a response from immigration was that was so uncomfortable guys you know knowing that anything you know the un sorry you know the uncertainty you know like anything could go wrong you understand as well as anything could go correct like you know everything could go right so it was just so uncertain guys i never knew what to expect right i never knew what to expect guys there was so much uncertainty surrounding all this situation and let me tell you something guys i worked 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 right i made sales and all that for the company and up until january guys <laughs> that was a rough time i think i still remember the day it's either it was a January 17 or it was a January 18. Yeah, it's either between January 17 or January 18. When I see they sent an email to my, to my email address and uh, it says that they have left a message in my account. And that's, that's how they do it. They send an email to your email address saying that, hey, you know, they leave a message in your account and go ahead and check it. And you know, I, I know when I got that message that it was my decision letter. Guys, my heart never pound so much yet in my life. My heart, my heart never yet pound that much in my life yet, guys. It never yet pound that much. And me, I tell you guys, when, when I go to open that immigration letter, that decision letter, Oh God, man, guys! When I open that letter, I saw must stay. Guys, I saw me look. I saw me look, guys. I mean, I scroll long, scroll long. You understand? And guys, let me tell you, I've never felt so crushed in my life. Like I've never seen my dreams just crumbled in one letter like that. You know. Because the first thing that I believe they said in the letter was, thank you for applying your interest in studying in Canada. However, after reviewing the application, we realized that, you know, we will reject your application based on these terms. I was like, Jesus, 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 what are they going to do? <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my God, everything crumbled down. You know? It was sad, guys. It was really sad. Even thinking about it, it was so sad, even thinking back on it. It was really, really sad, guys. But, ooh. but guys, as I said, you know, and I want others to take this as well. I will need others to take this as well. You know, like put this somewhere in the back of your head. You know, nothing in life comes easy. And I've learned that at an early age, right? And everyone should, you know, have a point in their life when they try to work towards something. And, you know, the end result isn't easy. But because of your determination, right, you, you continue to press forward. You understand? So when I saw my rejection letter, and guys, hear me out good, you know, um... I was down, I was crushed, I was crumbled, I was depressed, you know? I sent out numerous emails to numerous corporations, large businesses. I contacted PNP, PNP, People's National Party, JLP, both, you know? And uh, yeah, I sent out emails, Smile Jamaica, TVJ, you know, I'm going to show some of these on the screen for you guys to see as well, you know? And... Uh, I'm telling you guys, your resilience, guys, your resilience, guys, to have, you know, to, to push through the difficulty, guys. Yeah, I tell you guys, it wasn't easy. And 
This was like the day after seeing my letter. I, went, I even went back to work. I even went back to work and my mood was off, but I still had to work. Like I still had to work and doing work, you know, whenever them pause me, because you know, sometimes they call they pause me because we have technical issues, etc. I still start sent out emails, sent out emails, sent out emails, you know, everywhere, 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 guys. The gleaner everywhere, guys. That there has to be a solution. Like there are numerous international students here study, right? And I'm sure every one of them they're rich and they found a solution. So I was like, hey, there has to be a solution. You know? There has to be a solution. You know, I was rejected based on grounds of financial reasons as well as um coming back to my home country reasons, you know. I never had a st study, study, um, what, what do they call it again? An SOP. What is it called again? A study letter. It's like telling you know, why you want to come study here, you know, and uh, how you're going to pay for this, how you're going to do that, etc. Something like that. Yeah, I never had that in my application to like detailed explain what was going on. But neither do I had enough finance to show that I would be able to cover my studies. You know, so I know that was a big issue that I needed to resolve, right, before I reapplied. And guys, remember, my program starts in May, right? If I don't attend in May, then I'm going to lose half of everything that I've already spent. You know, I, I won't get back my application fee. You know, so basically, I'll be basically losing money same way if I wasn't able to make it for the May intake. And I was like, Jesus, it was now January, guys. Count the months with me. It was January. Right, basically January done because it was the R the 18th, so January done. So basically I, I only had February, March, April, and school start the first week of May. So I only had what? February, March, April. Wow. It was a rush. It was a rush. It was a rush. I needed a response urgently. Otherwise, I would lose so much. I could have pushed back my application to the next term, but same thing, I would have to reapply again. Money making thing. Anyways. One second. So, yes, guys, you know, I sent out lots of emails, as I was saying. And the first thing that came through was what was that? What happened? I created my GoFundMe, actually. I created my GoFundMe. About the 19th, January 19 or 18, I'm not exactly entirely sure. Right? I know I created my goal for me. I sent it out. I posted it on my Instagram. Right? I put it on my LinkedIn as well and all that. Everywhere I could think of. You know, I sent it to corporations in the emails saying that, hey, this is my goal for me link. If you can contribute, then that would be amazing. Right? Also, what else did I do? What else did I do? Let me see. What, what, what was the first thing that came through? I'm trying to remember the exact first thing that came through. It was either between the Gleaner. Yes, it was the Gleaner. It was the Gleaner. They were the first person. I think I got the call that they were going to come at home. Right? They were coming to my home. Right? And when I, I was so... I, don't, I never... It was like a bittersweet moment. It's like, I was like, Jesus, guys, it, it caught me as surprise, you know, it caught me as surprise, you know, guys, it caught me as unsurprised. I, I wasn't expecting them to actually, you know, give, even give me a response. A so big, big up to you, Gleno, you know, Gleno or a star, I think they work hand in hand. But yeah, um, I was getting ready fast because they're going to come. So, you know, I was washing my face, you know, brushing my teeth. You know, and all that, and all this, and all that. Call up grandma. <laughs> you know, as a grandma, green out, come, green out, come, interview me. <laughs> that day, man, that day, man. I'm, I'm telling you guys, that day. You know, so yeah, I did that. You understand? And uh, they came, they asked questions, they took pictures. And all I could did was hope that my story would, you know, go out there, guys. You know, it's just a, a, a little beam of hope. You know, that's, that's one thing we need to have, guys. A little beam of hope. And I mean, if it doesn't come through, you maybe, you know, go at it again. Go at it again until you get it, you know? 
go at it again. Maybe it just wasn't the time. You know, maybe I, I shouldn't get my application approved in January, right? Maybe that wasn't the time from, from, from me to, you know, get my application approved. Maybe it was for another time. And next time, of course, you know, so it's just God's timing, guys. And, and just have a little beam of hope. Just put a little bit of faith, you know? So, um, yeah, my story was posted on, on the Gleaners page, front page, mag the newspaper, uh, the Instagram page, everywhere. Their, their Twitter, everywhere, my story was posted. Lots of persons reached out to me from the Gleaner. I got a few donations, but still wasn't enough. You know, guys, I was like, Jesus, will I be able to meet my quota for the time range? Because remember, we're working the time, February, March, April. And I still would need to get about documents, right? And I still would need to transfer all the money from my GoFundMe over to my school to show that, hey, I'm committed to studying at my school. You understand? So, guys, time was a factor. Time was a big factor. No, time, time, time was a big factor. One moment. Yes, guys, time was a big factor. Anyhow, next thing that happened was Smile Jamaica reached out, you know, and they asked me if I can come and do an interview. And I was like, yes, certainly, most definitely. You know, when the Smile Jamaica did the interview with Neville, that was amazing. A little bit more persons reached out, got some more assistance, and, you know, I was on my way. Still wasn't there, but I was grateful for all the assistance I got, and I was like, okay, you know, we're making some step forward. And that was one thing that I love about myself. Like, I, I appreciate the, the baby steps that, that, that we're making, you know. I, like, I recognize that, hey, you know, I was once at this point, now I'm at this point, and things are going up. So I have to give thanks, you know, and be grateful for, you know, what I've received thus far. Anyhow, that happened, and uh, things were, you know, going in, time was going. Still never met the quota until one day, one day, Auntie reach out, Auntie DMG, Auntie Donna. You know, I never know where Auntie Donna live. I just, I just hear about 99. <laughs> That's the only thing I, I, know, I knew about at the time, you know. Anyhow, found my way at 99. And guys, let me tell you, and I wasn't expecting to, to, to um, get so much at so little time. You know, it's, it's like time, it's like the time factor just push. It's like, the, it's like the time factor was a big, was a big thing. And then it just went down like this, you know. Anyhow. Uh, that day was magical. That's all I have to say. Like, if I can't even go, that day was, that, that, that day is something for a next video. That day was, that day was just magic. You know, that day was, that day was a blessing. A, a real blessing, guys. Anyhow, things, you know, worked out, right? Got the amount needed, right? Paid over tuition, sort out documents, and, then we went back into waiting. <laughs> Guys, we went back into waiting. Submit the application and go, went back into waiting. Let me tell you. I was so... It's like this time, I was more relaxed. But at the same time... I don't know. It's like... It's like I, I knew I got through. It's like I knew, honestly, guys, it's like I knew I got through, hence why I was relaxed. I went to the beach. I went to a dinner. What else did I do? I went out with friends because I know it's going to be the last few months of me being with them. It's like, and my, and my, and that buried my heart this time, my decision never came. My letter never came true, right? But I know, like, I felt it with myself that, hey, this is going to be the last time being here with my friends. I never got a letter from immigration, but I just know. And yeah, right. Um, when was it? I don't remember the exact date, you know. But when the letter came through, man, you know, it wasn't even me that got it. It was my consultant, you know, and uh, this, she, she was trying to call me, you know. And I was like, I missed the call. I missed the call. 
And I tried calling her back, never got, never reached out to her. Then I checked my emails. Oh my God, it was, it was a day of celebration. It was a day to remember, you know. She was like, you're in, you're in, you're in. Your application is approved. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, as a grandma was in her room laying down, I'm going to say, grandma, me and go with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me, I said, grandma. Yeah, I was like, trying to know. Same time, we call Auntie D. Auntie D on the road, Auntie D starts screaming. <laughs> oh my God. That was, that was a day to remember, guys. That was a day, that was a day to remember, guys. So, yeah. You know, and that's what I want to say to the youths, you know. In a summary, after my high school days, never knew what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to do this to the outside of Jamaica. Many persons were saying that, hey, we are, many people got UV, U Tech, why can't he do the same? You know what I mean? Everyone has their life, everyone has their decisions to make. You know, everyone has their own vision, their own path. But honestly, my one was something different, you know. And not even different to say different from everyone else in the world because there are lots of persons, lots of international students that took this path. And I mean, they also had the opportunities to study in their home, co home country, which would have been a much easier option, but they took a different path, you know. And yeah, you know, that's the path that I wanted to take. And I'm here living the dream in the moment. Like, it feels good to be in the moment. I mean, I miss home. I really want to come back. <laughs> oh my God, but it's not time as yet. Work is not done as yet. Yeah. It's not even half of it as yet. Not even quarter of it as yet. Yeah. It's not even half of a quarter of it as yet. It's nowhere as yet, but it's a start. It is a start and a good start as well. So if I can finish, if I, if I start, like I was start strong, it's just to keep on pushing until the finish line and finish strong as well. So yes, guys, you know, thanks for watching this video. Like, share, subscribe. And if you made it this far, I hope you're inspired. Share the story with someone else and youths, Stop killing off yourself. Stop, you know, do illegal activities. There are lots, there's lots of opportunities out here for everyone, right? So just make the best of life. You only have one to live. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Make your people proud. Make Jamaica proud. Make wherever you're from proud. Maybe you're not from Jamaica, but you're from somewhere else. Yeah. Make everyone proud. And make the best of the opportunities. And guys, hope someone was inspired by this. Don't give up. Remember, don't give up, guys. I'm 19 and I'm, you know, on my way to my final vision. So don't give up your goals. And guys, you know, once you're seeing your rain coming this close to the camera, <laughs> you know it's the end of the video, right? So guys, have yourselves a pleasant day. Have some good food tomorrow, Sunday. You know, get the, get the house clean up. Uh, cook some nice food. Cook some fish. Send me my share. Remember to send me my share. If you reach this part of the video and you see this, guys, when you cook tomorrow, remember to do what? Send your in his share. Love, you know. Big up on yourself and I'm out.